Welcome, everyone, to our regular weekday morning podcasts on Kabbalah for Heretics. Good to see you all this morning. Let's get back to where we left off in Volume 4 of the Zohar. The Zohar is discussing a very complex and for many difficult to understand issue. Listen to what it says. Hence, serpents and idolaters and all who come from the side of the left are called agents of God in regard to those who bear this mark. So that evil, evil can in fact be good. And demon worshippers can, in fact, be agents of God. It's It's been using this image of a serpent wound around the legs of the, of the ass carrying the rabbis as an example. Now, just stop and think about, oh, I know that. Oh, yes, I know. No, you don't know that. You think you know it. You know something a little bit like it. You know, for example, that Good and evil both come from God. That, but that's not what we're saying. I am saying, the Zohar is saying, that God is both good and evil. Alternately, unpredictably. And if it happens that a sinful Israelite falls into the hand of another Israelite sinner, this is that they may both be punished and be purified by their punishment. But it's, <clears throat> it's not as simple as an Israelite falling into sin. God leads us either into sin or to holiness. Everything comes from God. Everything. Nothing we do is accidental. And nothing we do is by free will. The example I always give, and I'll give again, if you remember in the Gospels, they ask Jesus, how shall we pray? And listen carefully to what he says. He says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and on earth as it is in heaven. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The petition to God is, don't lead us into temptation. Don't lead us into sin. Because it is from you that we are led into sin. But instead, let your other side deliver us from such sin that comes from you, that is you. Satan is just God who got up on the wrong side of the bed. It isn't that Satan is, is outside of God. Satan is God. He is the other half of God, if you will. The other half being holiness. And God vacillates between the two unpredictably. And this is the problem with God. You do not know from one moment to the next what you are dealing with. The best we can do, and this is where you don't know what I'm talking about, is to be prepared for that possibility. To love God even in its satanic form as much as you love it in its holiness form. God is not a pick or choose. It's not that you love God when he's being holy and loving. And you don't love God when he's being evil and, and uh, fiery. That's not it. 
The problem, though, for God is that God knows it is in this binomial dilemma and seeks to get out of it. Over and over again, we see God apologizing for this vacillation in itself and the evil it brings upon Israel. But it cannot do it itself. It cannot mend itself. The problem cannot mend the problem. There is an outside source needed to heal from the outside, and that is man. You'll notice that in Genesis, man in the first creation is almost an afterthought. First, God creates everything, the heavens, the earth, the oceans, the mountains. And that's essentially what he's creating. But then, only then, does he create man. Man who will oversee God. Man who will do what God has given him the gift to do, which is to heal God, to bring God back together again to make the left side and the right side one side, one middle. Man alone can do that. God cannot do that in itself. I mean, it's, it's almost a well-known fact that if you're the problem, you're not the solution to the problem. The problem cannot find its own solution. It needs something and someone from the outside to see both the evil and the good and to work a solution out from the two of them. That is what man has been given to do. We call it tikkun hapanim, repair of the faces of God. Because the one face of God that begins in Genesis divides into two, the larger face and the smaller face, and it is no longer one. Man is given in the Zohar the prescription for how to heal that failure in God for the sake of God, not for the sake of man. God is in need of healing before it can heal us. So we do what we do not for our sake, not for the sake of the world, not for the sake of the universe, not to heal ourselves, not to heal our fellow man. That is not what we do and why we do it. We go about healing God so that the God with whom we are interacting no longer is good and evil by turns, unpredictably, but is neither and both and at peace. Said Rebbe Eliezer, whence do you derive all this? Where do you get all this? Where I've been talking about. He answered, from the incident of the concubine in Gibeah, from Judges 20. For though the sinners were all Israelites, God was unwilling that other sinners of Israel should be the instruments for punishing them. And therefore, numbers of them fell time after time all the sinners in the attacking army. This is very difficult to come to terms with. For example, the serpent, the great serpent of the 20th century, Adolf Hitler, was not just evil. 
he was in fact by that evil healing mankind. He was an agent of God to restore mankind, at least the tzaddikim, to their holiness. Now he was he was only partially aware of that. I don't think from what we can see in him, he was aware he was the Messiah. He knew it, he said it, and everyone around him believed it. And he knew that he was there to sort out the mixed multitude, to sort out the true Jew, the seed of Adam, from the false Jew, the seed of Nachash. Thus we see this tremendous separation that took place during that time, where millions of Jews picked up and moved, where? To the United States of America. Yes, a few of them went elsewhere, but so few of them as to be almost unnoticeable, so many coming to the United States that was it was clearly intentional. And why? And I talked about this yesterday. I'm going to talk about it again today because it's true, as true today as it was then. The Bible tells us that a remnant of Israel, a remnant of Israel is going to be brought to the promised land, to the holy land, a place where they shall live in peace and tranquility. Now listen to me. In all of history, the only, and I mean the only country where that was and remains to be true, is the United States. Yes, there were anti-Semites here. There are still. But it's not like Spain was at the time where anti-Semitism was institutionalized. It wasn't just that there were anti-Semitic anti Spaniards. It was that the kingdom of Spain practiced legal anti-Semitism. Only the United States, what was to become the United States, did not do that and still does not do that. Russia, under Stalin, set out to kill all the Jews of Russia, just like Hitler set out to kill all the Jews of Germany and everywhere else. Never has there been anything like that in the United States. There has never been an official, now get that word, there has never been an official ghetto in the United States, a ghetto set up by the Gentile government in which to house all the Jews to keep them away from the Gentiles. Never has there been that in the United States. Yes, there have been ghettos. My parents came from one. I, I essentially grew up in one. But those were self-selected. Those were Jews coming together for their mutual protection. It was not Jews being forced into these places by the Gentile government, only the United States. Listen to me. Now that, that has just extraordinary meaning. Yes, the Jews have despite the efforts of the Gentiles and other nations, have done fairly well, but not like in the United States. And remember what God promises the Jew. Listen to me. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he promises them, those who bless you, I will bless, and those who curse you, I will curse. The one country in the history of the world that has actually blessed the Jew is the United States. And look at the United States. 
It is the most blessed of all the nations of the world. Now, we, we're very quick to admit that, but we never look to the reason for that as I'm giving it here. Again, there has been vicious anti-Semitism in the United States. I grew up with it. I'm 82 years old. I grew up with it. Strangers on the street pushing me and shouting, get into the gutter, you dirty Jew. And everybody else around just looking and walking in their way. That's not institutionalized national anti-Semitism. There has been none of that here. There have never been laws against the Jews in this country because they were Jews. Ponder that. Ponder. Ask yourself, why, why has the United States become the leading nation of all the nations of the world? Everyone acknowledges it because it is the only nation that has blessed the Jew and therefore has been blessed itself in turn. I can predict that the moment, God forbid, the United States begins enacting anti-Semitic laws, it will no longer be the favored nation of the world. England is very much like that. England has been somewhat similar to the United States. As my mentor used to say, who lived in England, England has been decent to the Jews. But there have been official anti-Semitism. There has been official anti-Semitism in England. Not now that we know of, but there certainly had been. Never in the United States. I'm not talking here about that blind nationalism that so many people practice. I love America. I'm not talking about that. It is a quiet love that the Jew has and must have for this country to which God brought us. It's not like the poor black man. They were forced to come here by the Gentile, by the white man, and have therefore had a harder time reaching their full potential. They're reaching it, but it's been slower for them. The Jew, literally, my grandparents among them, were brought to the United States by God. The strongest, smartest, bravest, most experimenting, Jews of Europe were separated out from the other Jews and brought here to the United States. By God. Not by the other nations of the world or by the United States itself, but by God. Those who bless you, I will bless and those who curse you, I will curse. This country is blessed. There is no question about it because it has historically and since its beginning blessed the Jews. There were Jews on the Mayflower. Some of the original pilgrims were Jews. not shackled and forced to come here, but accepted as partners in coming here. Mostly, as I understand it, they were rabbis who would teach the Gentiles Hebrew and how to read and pray in Hebrew. 
so they had to they had to pay for their passage but they were brought here not for evil reasons from the beginning now that's not very often spoken of we have the daughters of the american revolution who have since their beginning been a racist anti-semitic anti-black anti-minority group of women who trace their lineage directly from the people of the Mayflower. Well, there were Jews on the Mayflower also. But I guarantee you that their descendants cannot join the daughters of the American Revolution. That's the closest this country has ever come to any institutional anti-Semitism, and it is not really an uh, institutional. Now, why am I why am I stressing all this? First and foremost, because it is a lesson to us about Jew and Gentile. It gives us a whole new perspective on what this great country is about, not militarily, not financially, none of those things, but about godliness. It is a country that has officially blessed the Jew, and therefore it has in turn been blessed. The debt of the United States to the Jew is enormous, and one which need not be paid off in any way. It is simply the will of God. The Jewish people as a people as a race, if you will, are salvific. And the United States was the only country that accepted that salvific nature of the Jewish people among them. Jesus says in the Gospel of John, salvation comes from the Jew. He says it. Wherever the Jew has been, and at least moderately accepted, that country has somewhat profited, not as much as the United States. Well, we'll move on from here. Tomorrow morning, I fully expect that there will be those of you who go away from this in the listening audience saying to yourself, ah, listen to that. A typical chauvinistic Jew. No, I'm not being chauvinistic. On the contrary, I'm praising this country and explaining the reasons for its greatness. Jew and Gentile together. First the Jew raising up the Gentile, and then following that Gentile into the land of Seir, where all will be saved. We don't have uh, anyone to ask questions this morning, so we'll skip that. and. Uh, let me end as I do every... Oh, no, I'm sorry. David has a comment. Go ahead, David. Whoops. Hang on. Very long comment. David, even the serpents and all creatures from the left-hand side can be agents of God. God leads us to evil just as much as potentially he leads us to righteousness. He creates all things and finally creates man as a means of regulating God itself. Now, I would only correct you in one thing. You've given the wrong and most common emphasis here. You say, you say, God creates all things. No, no. You say, even the serpents and all creatures from the left-hand side are agents of God. God leads us to evil. Yes, but that's not what I'm saying. God is evil. 
God is evil. It's not that just God, that God just leads us into evil as well as good. God is evil. And God is also good by turns. Never, please, forget that very, very important distinction. We are here to heal God. But the suffering of the Israelites is also the hand of God through his agents to bring into being the prophecy of bringing the remnants of Israel to the promised land. Those who bless you, I will bless, and those who curse you, I will curse. Excellent, David. I just wanted to correct that very, very common error that you, you fell into, that God brings us evil. But it's not that. God is evil. As well as good and vacillates crazily between the two of them. And mankind's purpose is to unite the evil in God with the good in God, so it no longer vacillates between the two, but, but is in a state of homeostasis. Did you want to say anything about that, David? It's a great comment. Don't, don't get me wrong. I just... I just needed to make that small correction very easy everyone falls into that ah good all right i knew you did ah very good thank you david god bless you man all right time to end for this morning and i will end as i do and have done every morning by reciting the kaddish the prayer for the dead in honor of the soul of our departed brother and fellow Kohen Leonard Cohen. Yiskadal v'yiskadal shmei rabo, bomo divro kilusei v'yam lechmach v'sei, v'chai echon of yom echon of chayi dechol beis Yisrael, v'agalo uvizman kori v'imru amen. Yehi shmei rabo m'varach le'elom omei omayo, yisbarach v'yishtabach v'yisbarav yisomam, let everyone please say Amen. <coughs> we end now for this morning. God willing, I'll be here tomorrow morning with another podcast. Hopefully you will be too. Until then, Yivarechecha!